first guest of the day joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline via Skype. He is Mike Littlewood. We mentioned earlier your wife probably has a crush on him. Coach, it's great to have you on the show. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Coach, given the circumstances, I, for one, think crying should be allowed at least a little bit in baseball because what we're going through is really rough. What do you think? Man, I, it, if you were in that meeting with us that day, um, you would have you would have had some tears. It was um, it was just surreal. It was just nobody really knew what to do, um, you know, and, and nobody really could find the words. And it's just like everybody staring staring at one another. And we got through it. I mean, we got through it, but it was um, it was tough, especially for Ben Weiss, Jared Lesser, and Abe Valdez, our seniors, who literally thought that their college careers were over. Um, and uh, so the the you talked about it a little bit at break. The the ruling helped, and we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm not sure, but it was a tough day. You were waiting to play a home game and the first WCC game. Spencer's waiting to call the game. The the Fig the process of figuring that out was was pretty wild. What was that day like as you realized, okay, we're not playing a game, and then beyond that, the next day, the NCAA cancels the uh, the seasons. Well, it was it was the day was interesting. I got a call from Brian Santiago, who's my um, direct boss, at about eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, and uh, saying that we're going to play, but it's it's probably going to be without any fans, uh, no family, no scouts, nobody in the stands. And I thought, well, at least at least we're able to play the game. And then a couple hours later, it was, hey, it looks like um, we're going to cancel the weekend and just kind of see how what's going on. In the meantime, I'm sitting in my office like I am right now watching TV, and, um, and along the bottom line, it said the SEC postpones their baseball season for three weeks. And I thought, oh, oh that's that's kind of what we – I mean, they're kind of the gold standard in baseball, so we, we kind of knew that would happen. Then the PAC did it, and then the Mount West did it, then the WAC did it. So I felt like we were next. Um, and then Brian talked to me about 3.30 and said, it looks like we're done because the NCAA had canceled the World Series. And so just in a matter of three hours, it was it was over. It was just crazy. Yeah, pretty wild how fast those dominoes fell. You brought up three guys that thought they were going to be playing there last year and how emotional that could be. But the NCAA is offering an extra year for guys like Ben Weiss, Abe Valdez, and Jared Lesser. How will that impact your program next season? Well, it, it's going to be a positive for us, no, no doubt about it, and a positive for them, I hope. Um, I have talked to Ben Weiss, and um, Ben, left-handed pitcher, just an awesome kid. He's, he's not going to come back. He's going to get on with life. He's going to graduate. Interestingly enough, all three of those guys will graduate um, on time. And so whether they delay and take a couple classes or whether they go into a, a, a advanced degree is yet to be determined. Pro ball is an option, you know, if, if that happens. And so if this were to happen, to answer your question, it's going to be a positive for us because we only have two roster spots that we're going to have to jam up. If it would have happened to us last year, we had nine seniors with 16 freshmen coming in and 20 new guys. I mean, that would have... Uh, it would have kind of destroyed the whole con – I mean, we planned two, three years ahead. We have 2022 20, kids, probably six of them who have committed to us already. Those are sophomores right now. Um, and so it, it really kind of would would have backed things up. But for us, it's going to be really, really smooth if we get Jared Lesser and Abe Valdez to come back if they, if they choose to do so. And still some details from the NCAA that need to be clarified relative to are we increasing your scholarship amount? Is Are there the minimums adjusted for how many uh, people you can share that with and so on? So we'll figure that out. Then there's this, Mike, and perhaps you also have this issue. Missionaries coming home that may have uh, finished their service at 21 months or are being reassigned. And it's, it's, a lot of that's up in the air. Will the missionary uh, situation affect BYU baseball? Uh, yeah, it will. Um and I won't name names, but we've had a couple of missionaries come back just uh, just in the last couple of weeks, just as you mentioned. And, um, you know, I've had to tell them that we plan on you being gone two years. And so if you're on scholarship, your your scholarship has to be delayed because there's no other way we can do it. And that's something we always deal with. And I'm sure every other sport does. But, we, you know, we're dealing with missionaries leaving, coming back, changing their mind if they want to go. Um, some of them get ho sent home early for, for various reasons. And, and so we, our scholarships are really planned out three, sometimes four years in advance. And so it throws a little wrench in it, but it's not something we're, we're, um, that's unique to us. We, we kind of deal with that. We were talking about it before the break, too, how 
certainly built into BYU Athletics is the fact that a lot of young men and now some young women go on missions, right? And that can be an advantage. It's a, definitely a disadvantage athletically, but it can be an advantage in terms of, uh, you know, maturation and whatnot when they come back. How have you handled that and tried to use that to your advantage? Well, the, the, the one thing that you want on any team is to be able to go into – a tough venue, say Oklahoma State or Arizona State or Gonzaga, whatever it is, and just not have your guys be intimidated. And, you know, it, it, as tough as these guys are mentally and as strong as they are, as good athletes, that, that happens sometimes. I mean, it just, it just happens. You guys have been around athletics um, just as much as me, and you know that that's kind of – if you go into somewhere and you're intimidated in any way, shape, or form, you're, you're not going to win. I mean, you're not going to be successful at all. And I think with the with the you take like a Justin Sterner, he spent two years in Samoa. He's not going to be intimidated by by some guy in the third row yelling at him. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And that filters down. And that, so the young guys can see how the older guys are reacting. And it just it kind of feeds upon itself. And so I think that just, you know, being able to perform under pressure, keep a calm head, have great perspective about why we're really here, um, social, academic and then, you know, athletics. It just uh, it just makes for a, a great culture, really. Mike Littlewood, BYU baseball coach, with us on BYU Sports Nation. When you are dealing with all of these moving parts and the fluidity of the situation, how do you remain in communication with your guys? Well, we use an app. We've used it for three years uh, called Pronto. Um, we use it to download uh, video as, as far as, like, um, just scouting video. It's just how we communicate, and so – we can DM through Pronto, and that, that's how I've been. Uh, like, for instance, yesterday I got the grade report. What is today? Wednesday? I, Monday I got the grade report. And, um, <laughs> I don't know what that I don't is. Know what you're saying now. You know, yeah, it ended in a Y. I know that. But So <laughs> I, so yesterday I just um, I reached out to eight guys and talked to them and, and uh, reached out to a, a couple extra guys just to see how they're doing. And a couple guys down in McKay Bar talked to McKay Barney and told him how great he was doing in class. Um and he said that he and, and Sean Rimmer had gone out and hit. So I'm just trying to stay in touch with them that way. Um, just to let them know that, that uh, you know, we're still alive up here and hopefully they're doing well. And kind of just kind of, I, I think it's a great opportunity for us to reach them on a different level. And it's amazing how the, the four or five days we were allowed to practice after the season were four or five of the best practices we've had the entire year because all the defenses are, were dropped. Um, they could relax. We could we could actually just have nice, calm conversations at the batting cage um, without them having to think, oh, I've got to do this in order to get in the lineup. It was just really relaxed, and we got a lot of work done. And those that week after after um, the season was canceled was really a blessing to us to be able to work with our guys and just be around them and kind of help their mental state a little bit and help ours as well. Along those lines, who was developing nicely? Who were you hoping to uh, see more of that you didn't get to see? Well, I think our infielders, those, um, you know, we started four freshman infielders a lot. Um, Cutter Clawson's going to go on a mission, but Peyton Cole's coming back. At, at, he was uh, played third a lot. They were all high school shortstops. Brock Watkins at short, um, Andrew Pintar. Uh, you know, some of those guys that were going to be in there every single day, I, I was really excited to see their their growth and development. But on the pitching side, I mean, um, Cy Nielsen threw great against Oklahoma State, one of the best Big 12 teams. You know, they won the, the championship last year. Um, I think he would have just made people's jaws drop. And Bryce Robison, and Robison, I know, uh, Spencer, I, I watched your, the Utah Valley. There's a debate there. <laughs> We've talked about we, it a we lot. Call him, we call him Roby, and he's like, it's it's Robison, but I like Roby, so just call me Robison. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want to offend anybody, but – but really, I mean, I just – all those freshmen, I think we played 15 freshmen um, in, the, in the first 16 games. It's just unheard of, and they all just went out and competed. Uh, it's just – it's going to be a really exciting team to, to coach in the future. Mike Littlewood with us on BYU Sports Nation, uh, clarifying last names for us. Thank little, you very little much, wood. Coach. Yeah, little <laughs> wood. Oh, I love that. Uh, we've talked a ton about how young your team was, but do you feel like they got enough real game experience to grow adequately before the season's abrupt halt? No, um, I think we we saw 30 percent of the growth that we were going to be able to see um, to, to be able to to be in league play. Not that non-conference don't games don't matter because they truly do. But just there's a different feel about conference games and the pressure that goes along with those. And 
uh, every game's a must win if you want to to win your league. And I was really excited to to see if if these young kids could go in there and and win the league. I mean, I, I really was looking forward to seeing those guys compete because I know the talent. I know the talents there. Rarely do you win with young at a high level with young young players. It, it usually takes juniors and seniors to be able to win at a high level. And, and so I was uh, I was a little anxious, but I was also super excited to see what how they would grow and develop. And hopefully their summer leagues will continue uh, that start in mid June. They'll be able to go out. Um, it's unique for us to go to be able to go out and play 60 games and get 200 at bats, 250 at bats, and get six or eight starts and um, see how they can progress that way. Coach, it's great to catch up with you. Uh, we wish you were in Studio B, and hopefully we'll see you in here soon. Uh, but we wish you good health and uh, a lot of good time with your family. Hey, if President Trump's right, I'll be there, in there the day after Easter, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, That's man. Yeah, Let's the, go. All uh, right, guys. I need blue goggles for that. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thanks.